Sea Dogs, or Age of Pirates as it used to be called for some time, has been one of the most consistent pirate sandbox series, going over 21 years now. Across the sea in Russia, a bunch of bear wrestles have started a gaming development studio called Akella. They then proceeded to make and publish a few game franchises such as Disciples and, more importantly for this video, Sea Dogs. Considering that Akella has worked with people like Ubisoft and Bethesda back in the day to publish some of the titles across the globe, it's pretty interesting how the franchise hasn't really seen that much significant success. And it's not like the games aren't liked by the players. If you look at the store pages on Steam, they often have very good rating scores. If you were to Google which one of the Sea Dogs games is the best, a bunch of people will tell you that it's the original game that was the best. Others, including myself, would say that the Sea Dogs Pirates of the Caribbean game was the greatest. That's got to be the best part I've ever seen. So it would seem. And yes, it was licensed by Disney to be a spin-off from the films, which as a tie-in was very flimsy. I think he had Kira Knightley in it do like one line of narration and they had the Black Pearl sail around somewhere and skeletons, but that's about it. Many other gamers say that the next game, the City of Abandoned Ships, was the greatest. However, some would say that to each his own is the most polished game in the series. And so every game in the franchise so far has been the best one yet. Luckily, for my sanity, I'm not here to tell you which one is the best game in the franchise. I'm only here to tell you that if you like games like Mountain Blade and other sandbox experiences, then you should definitely check one of these games out. The Sea Dog series is a sandbox role-playing gaming franchise, which allows you to sail all across the sea to different islands and settlements and make a name for yourself as a pirate. How you play the games is entirely up to you. You can either trade with the colonies, you can raid them, you can ambush ships, you can take on quests, it's up to you. All these actions play a significant role in how the different nations will perceive you. There are four main factions, the Dutch, English, French, and Spanish. And obviously how these guys see you will affect how they will react to you. So eventually, if you're really upset the French, they'll start shooting at you whenever they see you. And if you've really upset the British, they might do something ridiculous like Brexit. As a trader, you will sail across all the colonies and learn which settlement is producing what, which other island wants to receive that produce. And so you will find out where you can buy these goods for cheap and then sell it for better price later on. You could also smuggle some goods, but that is fucking dangerous. Because 8 times out of 10 you'll get caught and the whole thing will just go tits up. Anyways, the sea is full of pirates and other ships from other nationalities that will just not like the flag that you've got there, up there somewhere. And they will start opening fire and just being nasty. And this then quickly escalates to naval battles. Just like scurvy, a good stab stab is the quickest way to make your way through this puddle of tears that we call life. And so the cannons start firing and the men yell in excitement as grave shots just fly over the heads until both ships come close enough for boarding. And this is, in my opinion, the best part about naval battles. And in effect, it is factually the best part about the naval battles. You and your men board the ship and fight your way through up to the captain's cabin where you have the final duel. And should you be victorious in this, you can then keep that ship, its crew, its cargo, its everything, and then sell it at the nearest port for profit. Or you can just sink the fucking thing if you don't like free money. I don't, I don't care. It's up to you. Well, let's suppose you just want to be a pirate. Ambush ships, raid the forts, don't really get along with any other factions, and still be pursued by other pirates across the seas because, you know, hard mode, I guess. In that case, you can skip all the trading shit entirely, but only after you've gathered enough money to actually buy a vessel good enough for combat. And if both of these activities will start to bore you, you can just venture out to the jungles and caves and find lost treasures or even talk to the locals for any quests and jobs. However, once you do this, this is where the game kind of falls apart, because sadly the series suffers from many of the tried trends in the sandbox genre, such as not giving you any direction and what to do, and relying on FedEx quests to fill the void. In effect, you'll be buried in so many shitty quests that would put even the most committed pirate to sleep, such as delivering cargo from point A to point B, going to a jungle to kill Mr. So-and-so for the governor, and escorting ship from point A to point B. You'll wonder why the genre is called a sandbox game when the gameplay is so close to resembling an Amazon delivery guy's schedule. Maybe. It's all the beaches. <laughs> Fucking hell. 
all these jobs are timed and so you'll find yourself rushing from one island to another all the time. To make matters worse, you don't actually start the game with any maps, so you'll often have to go to online forums to see if there are any tips on where you have to go or find a PDF of a map that shows where the locations are in the game. Many quests that take place on land require you to be in a place somewhere at a certain time, so you can either skip the time by going to a tavern and going to sleep, but that only allows you to either wake up at 6 in the morning or, I think it's 6 in the morning, or midnight, but say, if you're required, to be in a place at 7 p.m. then waking up at 6 is not good and neither is waking up at midnight. So alternatively you can go back to your ship and then go into the world view mode which kind of speeds up the time a bit more or you can just stand in one place for a few minutes and use the in-game command to hurry the pace of the time up to like six times but that takes a few minutes in real life for the right time to arrive. And to add to the vast array of bugs and fuck-ups in the game design, there are a few locations in those games that have two different names. So for example, somebody will tell you, go to place so-and-so, but then when you reach the island, it turns out that the place is called something completely different, so you don't know what the fuck is going on. I imagine this must be what it feels like to be a taxi driver delivering a 40-something-year-old in high heels after ProseccoCon. Um, so where do you want to go, love? Yeah. Okay. Anyways, regardless of these negatives, if any of the points mentioned above sound appealing to you, you should definitely check out one of the games. All of the titles still have committed modding communities that are trying to iron out any of the glitches and bugs and add more content. If you can get your hands on the physical copy of the Pirates of the Caribbean game and are willing to find a way to run it on modern systems, then go for that and have fun. I'm, I'm guessing due to licensing reasons, you can't get it on Steam or anything like that, so it has to be a physical copy. But if you just want to get into it straight away, to each his own is probably the best bet, as it actually has a story that adds context to all the grindy stuff.